The defeat for All for One has left the League of Villains weak and vulnerable. They resort to petty crimes due to being financially restricted as well as dealing with civil strife amongst the group. Shigaraki recalls Kurogiri mentioning a power that was left behind for him to seek out. Suddenly, the hideout begins to shake violently with Gigantomachia emerging from the ground shouting why Tomura is too weak to be the successor for All for One. A voice calls out from a nearby radio to be All for One's doctor. The villains then begin to burp this black ooze out of their mouths as they are transported to a secret laboratory. Here, they officially meet Dr. Garaki as he tells Tomura that all of All for One's resources can be his if he can make Gigantomachia submit to him first. Flash forward a month and a half since that conversation as we see the League of Villains battling Gigantomachia. Twice receives a phone call telling the League to check the news. The news story reveals how there has been severed fingers scattered in locations where the League of Villains have appeared. The person behind the other line introduces himself as the Grand Commander of the Meta Liberation Army, Reed Destro. Reed Destro tells Tomura that he seeks to liberate all metahumans. He continues saying he has well over 100,000 people at his disposal and ends the conversation by offering two choices for the League. Stand against the Liberation Army at Dega City to be destroyed or remain stationary to be captured by pro heroes. The League of Villains gathers to discuss their current situation. Tomura mentions if they go to Deka City, Makia will be able to sniff him out. The League then arrives at Deka City where they are greeted by lieutenants of the Liberation Army. The League are then ambushed. Shigaraki uses his decay quirk to quickly move towards the tower. Toka is then caught by an explosion from Kizuki, aka Curious, wondering how Toka turned into a high schooler gone mad. Flashback to Toka's past covering an incident on a middle school girl injuring a fellow classmate sipping Mountain Dew Code Red Cherry. Basically, society including her parents villainized Toga for her admiration of blood. We cut back and forth between Toga's past and the present where Toga's getting wrecked by Curious's bomb quirk. If there was at least one thing the anime got right, it's just how fantastic this shot looks. As Curious is about to finish off Toga, Toga dashes off, pulling a sample of blood from her belt and transforms as Ochako. Strengthening her resolve, Toga begins using Ochako's zero gravity quirk. As Toga transformation fades, everyone falls to the floor. Twice is shown to have discovered Toga's location. As Twice clutches onto Toga, a group of men in suits stare Twice down. Strangely, all of these men have Jin's face. Skeptic's quirk can change things that are about the same size as people into puppets. Skeptic having studied Jin's psychological scars brings us back in time where we witness Jin's life before becoming a villain, slowly spiral down, suffering one bad day after another. Having no one to comfort him, Jin creates clones of himself. However, this decision further spirals Jin into an even worse predicament, now committing petty crimes and even suffering an identity crisis because of it. Cut back to the present, Skeptic's puppets continue to restrain Jin, breaking both of his arms. Jin laughs hysterically because he hasn't disappeared, admitting he's been avoiding any kind of major injuries to assure he was in fact the original. Sharpening his resolve to save Toga, Jin strengthens his quirk ability, unleashing Sad Man's Parade. Overcoming his psychological trauma, Infinite Doubles attack Skeptic's puppets and quickly begins to swarm a proportionate size of Deka City with twice his clones. Suddenly, Shards of Ice wipes out a good chunk of Twice's clones. We direct our attention to Dobby and Giten, who can control the temperature of ice. He notices how Dobby can fight for long periods of time without his flames consuming him. And he's right, because this point onwards, Dobby and Mr. Compressed don't contribute to anything substantial, so... Dr. Garaki awakens Giganto Machia, ordering him to Shigaraki's location. We cut back to Twice as he arrives at the top of the tower, confronting Reed Destro. The clones of Twice create several clones, including clones of Tomura, Dobby, and Mr. Compressed. They attack Reed Destro, but swiftly swats them away. The clone of Tomura survives and begins to attack Reed Destro. During this battle, we learn about Reed Destro being a descendant of the actual Destro revolutionary, reaffirming his belief as to why his cause trumps the League of Villains. Clone Tomura tells the actual Tomura to blow up the tower. Reed Destro survives the fall as we witness his quirk spreading through his body. His quirk titled Stress has the ability to convert stress, anger, and frustration into raw power. The real Tomura begins to battle Reed Destro. Reed Destro avoids Tomura's attack, pulling Tomura towards him, crushing his left hand. As he continues to crush Tomura's hand, Reed Destro notices his fingers disintegrate. He decides not to underestimate Tomura any further, as Reed Destro bulks up to 80% strength. Engulfing his body in a more demonic, bulkier form, he sends Tomura flying through multiple city blocks. However, Reed Destro is surprised to see Tomura unaffected by his ultimate attack. Both villains clash one final time before
Last time, I promise. Tomura's father is an abusive ass hat who beats up little Shiggy while the rest of his family members do nothing but watch. Then, little Shigaraki accidentally manifests his quirk for the first time, killing his dog, followed by the rest of his family. All for one discovers little Shiggy in the streets and eventually grooms him to become the new symbol of fear. Recalling every moment of his past, Shigaraki destroys the hand of his father, covering his face. Redestro activates 100% of his quirk to finish off Shigaraki. However, Tomura emerges from the attack unscathed depicted as an angel of death. Redestro finally unleashes 150% of his strength while Tomura unleashes a final attack of his own going Tomura laughs triumphantly as Deka City is now reduced to tiny buildings and debris. Redestro barely manages to survive the attack, losing both of his legs. The remaining members of the Liberation Army arrive to save Redestro, but he calls off the battle, admitting defeat, and submits to Tomura, offering his Meta Liberation Army as a reward. One week later, we see the League of Villains at Redestro's hideout. Redestro makes an announcement titling Shigaraki as the true liberator and grand commander, merging the Liberation Army and the League of Villains under a new umbrella, with Shigaraki proudly declares the Paranormal Liberation Front. Overhaul is still better though. 